Good morning everybody, welcome to Box Vicarage Kitchen for our Sunday morning thought for the day on this Passion Sunday in 2020. So five, I'm going to read from verse 17. Um, we need to remember at this point that Jesus is really good friends with Martha and Mary um, and their brother Lazarus. He is with them and Lazarus has died. Uh, and this is where we pick up the story when Jesus arrives at their house. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been dead for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she set, went to him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming to the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but he was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God. So they took away the stone and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here so that they may believe that you sent me. And when he said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. So that's the gospel reading for today. Um, it's Passion Sunday today where we think about Jesus and his death and resurrection and what that means for us. So this week uh, I had my first, uh, probably not only, funeral where there were just immediately, immediate family of the uh, person who died who were there. So three mourners came and they sat on chairs in Semington, six feet apart. So it's me, the undertaker, these three mourners. It was very, very different. It was a funeral for someone that I knew and I cared for. And it was a difficult funeral. 
Lazarus, when he comes out of the tomb, is still wearing his grave clothes. This is one of the things that makes Lazarus's resurrection and Jesus's resurrection quite different. Lazarus is not being raised by Jesus at this point to eternal life. Jesus is bringing him back to mortal life. That's why we have this kind of semi-comedic moment where Lazarus is staggering out of the tomb, bound, and he can't see anything because he's wrapped in his grave clothes. In the kind of spot, the difference between Jesus and Lazarus's resurrection, this is the clear thing. Jesus leaves his grave clothes behind. His body doesn't need, it's not constrained by that anymore. But Lazarus is raised to mortal life and Lazarus will die again in this mortal life. And then, well, when I was a curate in Wellington, I used to do two funerals a week, and it made me really think about life and death and what it means to be human. And this is kind of how far I got. I got that humans are made as individuals for Christians. We're made as individuals, to be eternal. So we're made as individuals to be eternal. But what we do here must be really important. But we are in. Jesus, when he is resurrected at Easter, not only does he leave his grave clothes behind, neatly folded, we're told that his head covering is kind of neatly folded, he starts appearing to the disciples in a way which shows that Jesus' resurrection to eternal life is different. He's no longer constrained by time and space in the way that normal people are when they're human. Wars. He's in more than one place at once, more or less, certainly more than he could walk from one place to another. He appears to people and people don't immediately recognise him because he is in his resurrection back to Sewington Crematorium. This lady who had superior tea drinking ability, she had a strong faith and she had a terrible illness and she died. Are we angry? Jesus was both of those when his friend Lazarus died. Do we mourn as those with no hope? No, we don't mourn like that, because we know that Jesus' death and resurrection shows that we don't need to be afraid of death. We believe as Christians that death is the ultimate healing. Lazarus kind of did the cycle an extra time. Lazarus lived, he died, he lived, he died, and now he lives forever. At the moment, our lives are disrupted and we might be fearful, we might be concerned, but we don't need to be afraid. We need to pray that we can live our lives without fear, remembering that Jesus will bring us to his eternal life, his ultimate healing. We don't know when that will be, but we know that he will do that for us. Amen. So I'm going to um, pray the collect for today, uh, Passion Sunday. And um, it reminds us of all the things that we think about on Passion Sunday. Most merciful God, who by the death and resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ, delivered and saved the world, Grant that by faith in him who suffered on the cross, we may triumph in the power of his victory through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now a prayer for those who are affected by coronavirus. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy. Sustain and support the anxious. Be with those who care for the sick and lift up all who are brought low, that we may find comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love. 
in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now the Lord's Prayer reminding us of all the things that it does remind us of, of God's care for each of us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now a blessing for us all. May the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and bless you always. Amen.